It's often said that we're in a golden age of TV right now. There's more quality content available than anyone can ever reasonably keep up with. Enough that many have even argued that TV has surpassed movies as an art form. As a result, for every bold and left field project we've seen greenlit in recent years, there have also been a ton of uninspired, creatively bankrupt projects that got few people excited. And while these projects sometimes bear worthwhile fruit, it's fair to say that many of them simply induce a shrug and the question, who is this for? And with that in mind, I'm Adam from What Culture, and here are 10 upcoming TV shows nobody asked for. Number 10, Echo. While not all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's TV shows on Disney Plus have been certified bangers, they've all at least presented an inherent justification for their existence. They featured characters that fans wanted to see. It's a harder argument to make for the upcoming Echo though, which will focus on the title character, aka Maya Lopez, Aliqua Cox, the deaf Native American warrior and former tracksuit mafia member who first appeared in 2021's Hawkeye series. Echo was a fine enough character in that show, but did anyone come away from it wanting to see her star in her own series? It would have made far more sense to keep Echo on as a supporting character in another series, say the new Daredevil show, and develop her in that way. While there's always the possibility that Echo is a pleasant surprise and a great show we never knew we wanted, it's much easier to believe that it'll end up feeling like filler content to plug some gaps in the Disney Plus pipeline. The MCU's version of The Book of Boba Fett, basically. All this, combined with extensive production delays amid rumours that the show has had a troubled shoot, make it difficult to be optimistic or in any way excited about Echo. Number 9. Dexter Origins Despite last year's Dexter sequel series New Blood giving the show a considerably stronger conclusion than its original one, in a near-literal feat of flogging a dead horse, Paramount announced earlier this year that three new Dexter shows are in the works. In addition to a follow-up series to New Blood revolving around Dexter's son, Harrison, and a prequel series focused on the Trinity killer, John Lithgow, another prequel series following a young Dexter, Dexter Origins, is also in development. While none of these shows admittedly sound hugely alluring, the Dexter prequel certainly sounds the most desperate and uninspired of the lot. A Dexter show without Michael C. Hall is a tough sell at best, and regardless of what you make of how New Blood's first season ended, it felt like a fine stopping point for Dexter's story. Does the world really need a prequel which details every last scrap of Dexter's trauma-filled youth? Absolutely not. But necessity's never really been the point, has it? Number 8. Squid Game Remake while this technically hasn't been confirmed, in recent weeks, industry insider Jeff Schneider reported that Netflix is actively pursuing an English language remake of their hit South Korean series Squid Game. Weirder still, Schneider confirms that Netflix is also courting David Fincher to oversee the remake, a claim that's certainly a little tougher to believe. All the same, Netflix remaking their biggest international hit is a staggeringly cynical decision, especially given that the show already offers a decent English dubbed option for those adverse to subtitles. Remaking it with a presumed American cast and setting will allow Netflix to double dip their own creation, effectively recycling the existing scripts with some obvious modifications for the English language treatment. And while it's not terribly likely that the remake will prove the water cooler hit that the original was, if it scores even just a fraction of the original's metrics, it'll generate some easy cash for the streamer. Let's be honest, you'll watch at least one episode out of morbid curiosity, right? Number 7. Sausage Party Foodtopia Hands up those who wanted a spin-off series from 2016's R-rated animated film Sausage Party. Anyone? Sausage Party was a juvenile but amusing slice of dumb fun when it came out, but did anyone give it much of a second thought more than a mere days after they saw it? But because it grossed $141.3 million against a mere $19 million budget, of course that suggested interest in a wider universe. And so late last year, Sausage Party Foodtopia was announced to be in development for Amazon Prime Video. It's been confirmed that Seth Rogen, Kristen Wiig, Michael C. Sierra, David Krumholtz, and Edward Norton will reprise their roles from the film, while Will Fort, Sam Richardson, Natasha Rothwell, and Yasser Lester will join the cast of the eight-episode series. Was anyone left with much of a desire to see what happened next in the world of Sausage Party? Even with the film's entertainingly meta finale, most were surely perfectly happy with the movie being a closed-off one-and-done deal. Number 6. Twilight when you've run out of ideas for spinning off a popular movie franchise, why not just remake it in TV form? That's a trend that seems to be growing in frequency if recent weeks are any indication. It was just reported that Lionsgate is in early stages of developing a TV show based on Stephanie Meyer's hit series of supernatural romance novels. And while they haven't yet settled on whether it'll be a beat-for-beat -beat remake of the film series or a thematic offshoot, it's surely best to keep your expectations low and anticipate the laziest, least imaginative take possible. While this news feels less sacred 
sacrilegious than returning to source material that's actually good, the Twilight movies were nevertheless specifically evocative of their era, and recapturing that zeitgeist appeal will be incredibly difficult. Again, nobody's butchering a classic if the TV show turns out horrible, but didn't we all move on from Twilight ages ago? This'll most likely mark an attempt to sell it to a new generation of tweens who perhaps didn't even exist when the original movies came out. One thing's for sure though, Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart won't get anywhere near this. Number 5. Peep Show US Reboot British sitcom Peep Show is one of the greatest comedy series of all time. A ferociously cynical slice of 2000s British life distinguished by its ever-present use of point-of-view shots to tell its story. Four previous attempts have been made to remake Peep Show for the US market in 2005, 2008, 2016 and 2019. And it was announced late last year that Atlanta writer Stephanie Robinson is set to pen a fifth for FX. This version actually seems to be ploughing ahead though, as Minnie Driver and Amanda Jahava have been cast in the lead roles, playing an unstable tech entrepreneur and her long-suffering assistant respectively. The reboot will apparently use the same point of view technique as the original show. Yet given how quintessentially British Peep Show was, it's tough not to view this new take as just cynically co-opting a brand name and stylistic trick rather than, you know, carving out its own identity. Above all else, living up to the awkward comedic chemistry of David Mitchell and Robert Webb will be damn near impossible. Number 4. Lando Back in 2020, Disney announced that a series centered around a young Lando Calrissian was in the works, with dear white people's Justin Simeon hired to develop the project and Donald Glover expected to reprise his rendition of the character from Solo, a Star Wars story. Word went incredibly quiet for several years, but in recent weeks Lucasfilm's Kathleen Kennedy confirmed that Lando was still happening, while reiterating that Glover was also still involved. As entertaining as Glover's performance in Solo was, does the world really need a Lando-focused series? Aren't we all fed up with the Imperial era at this point? Could Disney not make more original shows with new characters set in different time periods? It's often said that, for as vast as the world of Star Wars is, they keep making it feel so small and incestuous by constantly reverting back to the characters we already know, and the Lando series will only further compound that. Lando's a great character, but not every great character needs their own show that completely demystifies them and likely softens their original characterization. No thanks. Number 3. Trillions in a headline that feels like a tripped and fell straight out of subreddit Not The Onion, the creators of hit drama series Billions are developing four spin-off projects to keep their Billions universe chugging along, after the main series wraps up with its upcoming seventh series. Showtime announced earlier this year that two of these projects already have titles. There's Millions, focused on young up-and-comers in finance, and far more hilariously Trillions, which is said to be a more soap opera-esque drama involving the ultra-wealthy. Beyond the fact that not even the most die-hard Billions fan needed the show to spawn its own media empire, Trillions sounds about the most creatively bankrupt way to try and one-up the original show. If you listen closely enough, you can hear an executive say, add some more zeros on, f*** it, when pitching the show. Hollywood eventually needs to hear this. Sometimes it's okay to just let shows have their time and end. Not everything needs its own cinematic universe. Number 2. Harry Potter the sound of a collective groan was heard a few weeks ago when Warner Brothers announced that a Harry Potter TV series was in development for their streaming service, HBO Max, now known as Max. Rather than simply continue J.K. Rowling's world from the perspective of new characters, an idea with actual promise, this show will instead simply be readapting her books in serialized TV form. Each season will adapt one of the books with an entirely new cast in what Warner Brothers described as a decade-long series. Even ignoring the massive logistical headache of roping in a young cast for a whole decade and the obvious issue issues with aging if the show strays from a season a year schedule, does anyone want the movies remade? The films are generally held to be a very strong, if imperfect, series of adaptations, and living up to the iconic appeal of the original cast will be nigh on impossible. More to the point, do Roland's books really need to be expanded into a longer form TV series format? There is potential for filler to be added to elongate the stories to the length of TV seasons, which frankly sounds awful. This seems like a disaster waiting to happen, which is very much on brand for Warner Brothers right now. Number 1. The Walking Dead, Dead City it's been long joked about that The Walking Dead has basically become a shambling undead husk itself, because even though the main series finally concluded with its 11th season last year, that wasn't really the end. Three spin-off projects are currently in production, and while the two revolving around Rick and Michonne and Daryl have an imminent appeal, doesn't The Walking Dead Dead City feel wholly unnecessary by comparison? Dead City will follow Negan and Maggie in a post-apocalyptic Manhattan as they attempt to rescue Maggie's kidnapped son. Even with Negan's character development in later seasons, this 
this pairing just seems wildly implausible, and given that their respective arcs felt tied off by the end of the main show, it can't help but feel like a desperate attempt to milk the Walking Dead IP for every last drop it's got. This likely won't be creative storytelling well worth your time. It'll probably be brand reinforcement above all else. So there we have it folks, our list of upcoming shows that nobody asked for. But please do let us know in the comments section which new TV shows or movies are ones that nobody asked for in your opinion. If you want to follow me on socials, I am at Strawn87 on Twitter and on Instagram. Come and say hello to me on there. Thank you for watching everybody, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and until next time, take care.